Hello there. Thanks for tuning in to Town Meeting TV. My name is Bobby Lucier. Today we are joined by candidate for Congress in this election cycle, Adam Ortiz. Adam, thanks so much for joining us today. Thanks for having me. Awesome. So, uh, love to just hear a little bit about your campaign, why you decided to jump into this election, and what you're talking about with voters. I ran last time. In my defense, I was in a coma. It sounds made up, but it really did happen. So I didn't really campaign as much, being that I was unconscious for three months. You don't believe me? Go to the VA in White River Junction. And as soon as I woke up, as soon as I was able to talk again and got the trach out of my throat, I said, we got to finish the signatures. So I finished what I thought. That's what really happened. People thought it was made up. I'm in a wheelchair. I'm on oxygen. And I'm telling the nurses that I'm going to run for Congress, and they thought it was all the drugs. So I try to explain to them, I need a job that's going to pay me whether I'm good at it or not. And so I thought, politics, Congress. I will be as honest as you expect a politician to be. And kids, don't listen to your mother. I'm not your father. <laughs> so wait, go back a little bit. So the last, so 2022. 2022, I started getting the signatures. I got COVID. Okay. Wash your hands. Get the vaccine. There's nothing in the world that somebody's not allergic to. So I understand everybody is not the exact same person. Health is wealth. Wash your hands. Hygiene. I got COVID. I was in a coma. I didn't finish getting the signatures. Then when I woke up, I had a trach. I was breathing, eating. Going that was from COVID? From COVID. <clears throat> the last thing I remember, there was a big door that said, abandon all hope, all ye who enter. Then some guy threw me out and said, no, 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 it's bad enough here without you. We'll wait. And I woke up, I was in the hospital. That didn't happen for real. <laughs> so he was going to call an exorcist on me. So then um, I finished getting the signatures. And I put my cards on the table, and a lot of the stuff that I was saying became other people's policy, which is fine with me. Just get it done. Vermont needs infrastructure stuff related to engineering and construction, and you're going to deal with people that are not PG rated. Here I am. I got this covered. So, Adam, did you work in construction? Or yes, you, I'm a construction guy. Okay, all right. Fire service, U.S. Army. Um, I worked as a prison guard in Iraq, then an MP in Afghanistan. So I understand a military policeman. MP, okay. I don't know why the army thought it was a great idea to make a guy like me a cop. But it turns out I knew what the criminals were thinking. I wonder. Shh. So as far as the National Guard in Vermont, everybody's getting a PT test. And if you qualify for school, you're getting voluntold to go to school. Oh, doing what you feel like is what the army is all about? No, 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 no. This is not Private Benjamin. So. Everybody that qualifies for whatever school, you're going to that school when it comes to the National Guard. I'm a congressman. I rank a four-star general. It's great. Okay, so you, let's go back to your experience in, in construction. You're talking about infrastructure. What, what's your, what, you mentioned some experience in the military, but where, then when did you switch over to construction? I was in construction first. Then 9-11 happened. Then I was a big guy. I went to San Francisco to starve myself to get small enough for the army. Then I went to the army. So what year, like what time? 2006 to 2012. Okay. So I had a ramen noodle diet for like six months. And they were like, what are you smoking something? I was like, hmm. I did what needed to be done at the time. 9-11 happened. I live in New York City. My nephews and my cousin was supposed to do a trip to the Statue of Liberty later on that week. So the possibility of my family being affected directly did happen. I live in New York City when that happened. I saw it happen. So. You were in New York for 9-11? Yes, I was. I was in New Jersey. I was right. right so yeah. it's a different. This is the first 9-11 I didn't break down crying. <sighs> it sucked. So, yeah, the helplessness you felt. Military service is not for everybody. If you want to join the military, make sure you want to join it for yourself, for your reasons. Public service will find something for you to do. Back to the housing stuff, we have structures already here that just need to be repurposed and upgraded. 
I deal with people all the time. I go to everybody's meetings and they're always talking about a surplus and then their budget got cut next year because they didn't spend the money. Winterize it. You live in Vermont, it's cold. Change the pipes, change the wires. Find something to do or find somebody to find something to do. And that's me, the necessary rude guy. Look at how many people are so polite to people. Déjalo, está llorando. No, stop that, get to work. But it's, uh, am, I, am I the bad guy here? Am I wrong? Well, so what do you think is, what, what, what's the value of, of um, bringing some rudeness into, into your work? Okay, if you've never had a blue collar job and you need a blue collar task done and you don't understand it, I could tell you anything. And what are you going to do about it if I walk off the job? If you walk off my job, I'm going to do the job myself. I'm going to pay you in full. And I'm going to have you sit there, watch me do a better job than you. So you've jumped in the, the race for Congress again this year. What, what made you decide that you wanted to um, jump in for a second time? Is this your second time? Second time. Second time. Blah, 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 blah. I'm trying to clean this up and you not use swear words. <laughs> Listen, are you watching the same news that I'm watching? When it comes to different matters of the military, I'm not going to send your kids out to go fight. But if they do, I'm going to make sure your kids have the training, the tools, equipment, not only when they go out, but when they come home. I need you to Google, how many homeless veterans are there? There's a difference between you being a nomad and being a, uh, a homeless person. A nomad is out by choice. A homeless person has been rejected by the society he went to, or she went to go fight for. So now you come home and you got nothing. Okay. You got to readjust into this society. And I'm broken in the head when it came home and Vermont helped fix me. So I owe you guys. Then when I got sick, you fixed me again. So again, I owe you guys. You got no idea how good you have it that I'm here. You're welcome. So can you tell me a little bit more about your, your experience in the Army? What was that service like and, and what did you take away from that experience? When I got into the Army, I was surrounded by people that were angry and wanted paybacks. Then when I got to Iraq, you snap out of it. No, 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 no. Those people did this, not all of these people. This individual, not, if I never met you, how many biological relatives can't behave themselves? I've never met them. How many people in your circle, you always got to dig out of trouble? That is true all over the world, in every part of the world, in every economic, social, religion. Those people, that side of the family. So, I served with Iraqi army, I served with Iraqi police, I served with Afghani army and Afghan police. It's not those people, it's those people that did it, not the entire Afghan people. So yeah, you go in angry at everybody, you just, and then you snap out of it because in the real world, no, 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 no. This guy caused the problem for the rest of people that have nothing to do with it. Same is happening right now. Anywhere in the world, a small group of people made this much problems for that many people. Yeah. On a lighter note, I want to make the rest stops make uh, bathrooms with mobility, scooter accessibility, and mini museums. And I want to put border patrol, state troopers, and an ambulance in each rest stop. So the local ambulance corps, you move into the highway, and we'll set it up, make it look nice. And um, this Why, will only benefit people that need to go to the bathroom. If you gotta use the potty while you're on the road, I got you covered. But why put the border patrol? Human trafficking. Rest? I live in Newport and I see things that we don't say out loud because it'll mess up tourism. So saying things out loud isn't economically in the best interest of all of Vermont. I live in Vermont. I live in Newport. We see things, we hear things, things happen. 
that you don't say on TV. We want the tourism money coming in, you be quiet. We'll take care of it. We're gonna need to set up a processing place so that the detainees don't get dropped off at the gas station. We're gonna need to set up a processing place that uh, undocumented illegal aliens don't get dropped off at Walmart parking lot. Here, bring them here. We will bring them here. Don't drop them off at Walmart, stop that. Stop dropping people off at freaking mobile gas station. I'm not saying who's doing it, you guys, but stop. So you're running for Congress. How do you feel that Congress is serving you currently? And what do you think that Congress should be more focused on? No, 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 no. You got to look at it like an orchestra. If everybody's playing the exact same instrument at the exact same level, it's not an orchestra. What I bring to the table is the necessary evil, necessary rudeness, construction experience. This is yes, this is no, this is up, this is down. We're not doing that. If you don't have electricity, I don't care how good a programmer you are because you ain't got no electricity to do your job. That's me. I'm the construction guy to focus on the infrastructure. There is a trillion dollars with the Department of Transportation available. You should be sending rounds down range applying for everything. The USDA has rural development. Same thing. Let's simplify the application and make a template. Sign here, initial here, address, boom. Grants.gov, and there's other, you're a subject matter expert in this. Stay there, be the best you are at that. I can do this. That's what Congress should be doing, being the best at what they are the best at. And in the orchestra, I'm not gonna understand the paperwork as good as somebody that has been an eternal student. And that person's not gonna wanna do blue collar stuff. So that's where I come in. Same like in the army. I'll just do all the jobs nobody else wants to do when I get out of doing the PT test. Uh, I shouldn't say that out loud. It's too late, I already got it. But it's the truth. I'm gonna do all the jobs nobody else wants to do and get it done. And then all the eggheads, uh, excuse me, eternal students, what do you call these people, nerds? What's the, 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 the term? I'll let you call them what you want to call them. <laughs> Fine. You're an eternal student. You never want to do anything that makes you sweaty or dirty. I got you. F simplify the process. We'll move forward. And I'll give you a template. And in your state, this is how your rest stop could look. When you go to the Midwest, they handle a lot more truckers. So their rest stops are like monuments. Vermont can have rest stops that make everybody else jealous. And it increases tourism. So you have the indigenous people, the Abenaki, have a little museum. What are the other two? The um, other, um, the other, the Missisquoi. There, there are four bands in, in Vermont. There's the... I thought there was three. I think there's four, but I'm not... The I'm, Mohegan, some people got the casino, so they're good. I, I'm, I can't remember all four of the names. There's, yeah, but anyway. The native people, federal recognition, you get your little museum, and everybody gets, you understand? Vermont makes money from being beautiful. So don't make anything ugly. Let's talk about construction and how, uh, and blue collar jobs you talked about. It seems like one of the problems right now, construction is taking a really long time right now. There's a huge backlog. I know why. Go ahead and, and yeah, so wh why? Because you're a nerd, nobody respects you, there is no consequence to upsetting you. If you don't do what I say, when I say, how I say it, you're gonna leave with hurt feelings. So you're saying that construction There's no workers... consequence to these guys that dress like this. I don't dress like this, I dress like this because of this. When I walk onto that site and you're not working, you're not working. There's no consequence to upsetting these people. What are you gonna do? How many times? Millions of dollars over budget, delayed by years. They're not scared of this guy. I give Freddy Krueger nightmares. So you, how would you approach giving, <laughs> giving uh, or, or getting- Everything is legal when you're a politician. I'm gonna definitely color outside the lines, but try conventional ways first. But construction workers, if you want more construction workers that are more uh, competent and able to get the job done, how would you go about doing that? 
this is what it is. You have caravans of construction workers. So all the trailers we got, we got to bring them in from out of state. Then you have like these little tent cities, but with the trailers. Because the subject matter experts in each trade, we have marble people, we have plumbers, electricians. We have guys that are booked out. And we could put them, not to step on their toes, as project managers. Either we have out-of-state workers come in, do the job, and go home. There's millions of dollars available for uh, people with special needs, mobility, scooter, housing, senior citizens, and veterans. So build those. And when they don't fill up, put regular people in there. Done. That's the loophole. Ah, we couldn't fill it. We didn't have enough uh, geriatrics. So, Adam, you're running as an independent candidate, right? The, so is this other guy. I forgot his name. Starts with a B. I don't have his name. But yeah. you're running as an independent candidate. Tell us a little bit about that process, how that's been. Did you consider running for a party nomination? Yes. And but how, the thing yeah. is, is that a letter doesn't make you good about it, your job. And what happens is, I know party members of all parties, and they're not all on the same page with every single topic. So just because you have a letter next to your name doesn't make you think the exact same way as the same people in the room. So yeah, if I say something, I get in trouble. But if I'm a part of a party, I represent the party and I gotta behave myself more. See, I said the quiet part out loud. I'm as honest as you expect a politician to be. <laughs> So how has it been running a camp an independent campaign? You know, there there was a debate hosted by Vermont Digger, I think, yesterday. And, yeah, and, and I sent them an email why I was excluded. If you took money from another country, that's treason and election interference. You do what your heart tells you to do. PBS is going to do the exact same thing like last year. They're exempt from the law. They're exempt. We don't have to bring everybody in. They had plenty of time. I looked at people's debates for the last 20 years, the first time around. Every single candidate was up there. Up until recently, who's giving you the money to interfere in America's elections? If it's not coming from the United States of America, you're committing an act of treason. Uh Adam, what are you trying to accomplish with this run for Congress? Are Pay you, you guys back. Pay you guys back, and I'm done, and I'm out. I'm a nomad. What do you mean by that, pay you guys back? You guys did really good for me. I was broken. I was broken, broken. I are came you guys... from Afghanistan. Vermont, the institution of Vermont. Yeah. Every single part of Vermont. When I came home from Afghanistan, uh, I was working in your farms, and there's so many weirdos here, I feel normal. I was like, oh, wow, look at that. I never saw people, well, I've seen it before, people getting into fight over fiction. Dungeons and Dragons, they want a fist fight over it. I was like, oh, wow, I better not make fun of these guys. Because you know, it's like, whoa, he got really irate. Star Wars, Star Trek fights. I want it like they had the Marvel versus Capcom crossover. It's a matter of time. But yeah. Thank you, guys. When I got sick, you helped me. When I was broken in the head, you helped me. So I owe you. I could fix things. Uh, what Just, have you heard from people? You, uh, you, so you've been on that. What does your campaign look like? Do you have events or do you like connect with people? I what? go to everybody else's event and just be a fly on the wall. Oh, really? I go to everybody's event and there's free food. So why not? What do you hear from people? Uh, it's copy and paste. You got people that aren't subject matter experts in charge of stuff because they don't want to step aside. If you're a team player, you want to win. If I'm on the bench and you win, you, you get whatever makes us win, I still won on the bench. So, like what you were saying about the construction projects taking too long, can you get out of the way and bring in that friend, because everybody's got that friend that you don't bring around the rest of your friends. That's me. Tell the kids to be quiet, let daddy drive, and I'm gonna get it done. Adam, thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, I think we're gonna wrap up here. Do you have anything else that you want voters to, to know about your campaign or just about who you are? Even if you don't vote for me, just vote. The turnout was scary. Um, I answer questions all the time to different people that don't have confidence in the election system. 
It's the same exact thing as institutions that have a budget and then they don't spend it. Well, that's a census also. So if the turnout for the election is so low, the concern for that region, because what is the consequence? They could put anybody in there, do anything they want, because you're not going to vote them out. So even if it's not for me, just let your voice be heard. All day, every day, when I was collecting the signatures, my vote doesn't count, my vote doesn't count, my vote doesn't count, oh, I've never voted. No, you have to at least be heard. Write in a joke name, at the very least. You're upset, right? So upset them right back. How many people they write in cartoon characters? Goku for president. Adam Ortiz, candidate for Congress, thank you so much for joining us today. Appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Love you, Vermont. Thank you for everything you've done for me. If I get elected, I promise to put subject matter experts in charge and take the credit for their hard work. Adam, thank you very much. I appreciate it. Thank you for coming. Thank you for tuning in to Town Meeting TV. So long.